Hello, hello, and welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge, Sunday's Euro Global Division. If you're in Australia, of course, this is Monday morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., depending on what part of that island you are on. Uh, joined with me in the broadcast booth this evening, this afternoon, this morning, <laughs> is Adam Morrow. Welcome, Adam Morrow. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, wild to think we're already on round five of, uh, I think, a 12-round series. So um, guys are starting to fall into their place. Going to be a good race. Great track. Definitely. Definitely. It's going to be a really great race. We've got, as you can see, 33 drivers on our grid. That's a very large grid for these cars. Standing start. It's going to be an absolute blast uh, with a reverse grid top eight into our feature, which is 30 minutes long at that sprint race. The initial race is 15 minutes long. Right now, we're just watching our qualifying. This is Flo uh, Philip the Hammer uh, going around some laps. Here's Bernardo Faria. I love that red paint that he's sporting right there um 
everyone's just got everyone's got their four laps that they can set their fastest time in qualifying they have a 32 celsius track temperature as you can see so it is not a cool track in the slightest uh so it really adds to that challenge that and with this um these recent updates of the porsche cup it's uh it's a new car the the suspension geometry has been updated the tires slightly uh, adjusted the aerodynamics slightly adjusted and i don't know what you what do you think of this new update on the car where what's your take well, I love it. Uh, you know, I've been iRacing for maybe close to three years now. When I first started, it was the uh, the older Porsche, and it uh, brings back some memories of that car to me. Um, I'm I'm not a very good uh, guy to take feedback of what the car is doing. Car racing is not my uh, in real life kind of thing, but uh, I love it. I love the opening up your corners, coming out counter steering. Um, uh, I I love the changes. I'll I'll take them any day. Definitely. I absolutely love it as well. The um, the rear end of this car is now definitely like a, a wild to wild. Before it was a little bit of a mild to wild and there's, there's almost no in between. Now it's just wild, straight to wild. And it's it's really brought back a lot of that fun factor that we used to have, I gotta say. Yeah, absolutely. You said it, and you and you're right up in Discord. You nailed it there before the race. You know those first lap, it's uh, it's skatey. You're sliding, but man, once you start heating up and uh, back to finding your mojo, you could really set some uh, set some laps. Like Phil Hammer's done here. He's he's dipped into the 138 somehow on this hot track. Yeah, definitely. That is a magical, magical lap. I don't even know how he's done that. This it's never seen before lap time. <laughs> I, you know what? That's that's unsportsmanlike. He's going too fast. We just got, <laughs> we got boo him from the lead from that one. That's he's just it's not even fair. Oh, there's Bernardo Faria, a one thirty eight point four five seven. So we spoke too soon. You know, ah, wow. This is going to be a real interesting race because it's not just about that one lap pace for your qualifying it's going to be can you get a good start can you do a great turn one and understand how those brakes and tires work on the remainder of that first lap second lap and so on and then continue that through the rest of the race it's it's not an easy task i gotta say yeah, it's a bit of a equalizer a little bit, eh? Everybody's kind of kind of shuffled in a little bit that first lap. I gotta say, anyone who's driven the Skippy, uh, the Skip Barber car, is gonna have a huge advantage in this latest update uh, because you've driven the Skippy, and you know how it takes like say six, seven laps for the fi tires finally to come in, and then you're like, hey, look at all this grip that I've got. Uh, but the first lap, especially, you're skating on ice, and it, it's almost an identical sen uh, sensation is what I was finding. So I guess that's the hot tip of the day. If uh, if you don't understand what's happening, go drive the Skippy a while, <laughs> and you know that's you might you might get uh, get to be able to bring those skills over into the Porsche Cup the way it is now. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's a good tip. one that you, how you drive it, and then uh, you know you could always use it. Maybe if you're not the hottest driver, you learn that race craft uh, to keep your cool in that first lap to to make get some quick wins from guys that maybe not so fall on those uh, tips and sliding off the track. Grab, grab a couple spots that way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so this oh and. There is the end of qualifying, so Misha Berger not able to complete that final lap. I guess he went out too late, and now he's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, so let's just take up the results of our qualifying, bring that into the very middle of our screen, and here you go, Bernardo Faria. Congratulations for pole position with an absolute wonderful lap, 138.457. Five, Philip Hammer, one tenth behind, and then the rest of the field is just... Uh, quite far behind <laughs> so it'll be really wow. great you know what the race and how it is now it, it can definitely be an equalizer so even though the, the those qualifying laps were blazing fast uh the race is where it really counts and i'm really excited to see how this goes so you got philip hammer and p2 florian capo bensa cypher coming back to join us once again welcome back bensa benjamin pape uh samuel k spruel Frank Smith, Danny Hugendorn, Thorsten Seifert, Ryan Winfield, Alexander Wilford, 
Win- Ryan Winfeld, Alexander Wilford, Jerry Steinmetz, Lee ha- Holmes, Alejandro Tosi, Gregory Ranks, Bruno Heinrich, Francois Schink, Philip Straffarelli, and we're going to have to bring down this list just a little bit so we can see Amir Carr, Misha Berger, Jason Lyons, Mark Oliver, Ruben Van Buell, Gordon Ramsay, very far back, Bjorn Ritter, yeah, that is weird, Aaron Hall, Thomas Prod Brocky, Barry Clayton, Glenn Humberstone, Edwin Van Driel, Steve Kleis, and Alexander Redhead, then Craig Schill. Yeah, so. not some na- familiar names, but in uh, some unfamiliar spots there on the grid, but uh, let's see what, how this shakes down. Definitely. I'm really excited. Here we go. We just finished in time. We got the lights up in the middle of the screen. I'm going to hide that timing tower so you can see all the beautiful cars. All the lights are up on the middle there, and the lights are off. And away we go. It looks like Philip Hammer's not gotten the start that he wanted, and that is going to hurt his race. And the end, Bernard Faro, of course, is off to the races. And away he goes as we head through turn one. We hear a little bit of crashing banging, and it looks like everyone is no worse for the wear. Just heading on through towards turn two, braking zone. Everyone is okay so far. A okay. Here's Philip Straffarelli in the middle of this field. We have a whole bunch of positions going up and down. And we're going to bring up that timing tower right now. And you can see who is exactly where. And oh, and there's a spin of from Philip Straffarelli in the back. And right back up to this lead pack. We got Bernardo Faria heading into the braking zone of the hairpin for the very first time. And he is in the lead with Florian Capel directly behind Benson Cypher. And oh, and we hear a little bit of crashing. And that is Bruno Heinrich, I believe, who is off onto the side. Absolutely wild to see this many cars going side by side on these cold tires. That is absolutely treacherous, and they are just making this work. Jeez, they're not uh, outside looking in. You wouldn't think that. And nobody had cold tires. These guys are sending it this first lap. Uh, oh. That's it. Ooh, got another one collected there. Oh, Danny Hugendorn getting a little bit wild out of that turn, and I got my track max up this time. That would have been turn 10, so going a little bit wild on turn 10, and uh, that's put a lot of the drivers that were directly behind him into an interesting situation. A few passes going on, and here we go. Thorsten Seifert is under fire from Yuri Steinmetz and Alexander Wilfred. Alejandro Tosi is right there as well, and we've also got Gregory Vranks. Nice, we're yeah. Good, way, good example of uh, how to capitalize on a good qualifi- qualification position with Bernardo and uh, how it can go bad with our uh, Philip Hammer. He, he was in second off the start and, and he slipped off the start. He's back in eighth and he was outside the top ten uh, just circulating the track there. So... And here All we go with, and everything. And here we go with Thorsten Seifert trying to fend off Yuri Steinmetz. Yuri Steinmetz getting the inside in turn two and now has the favorable lane position as they head towards the hairpin. Yuri Steinmetz in this green car at 164, and that's allowed Alexander Wilford to follow on through in the draft on that inside lane position of Thorsten Seifert as we head into the breaking zone two by two. Uh, and Yuri Steinmetz is ahead. A little bit of a lock up and from uh, I believe that is Alejandro Tosi but everyone able to keep it clean oh no a little bit of misfortune it looks like francois shink getting a little bit of a bump from behind and that sent him right round um that i'm not sure how that happened that may have been from gordon but uh not quite sure here we go just a little further back with steve Kleis. And he is following Craig Schill, Ruben Van Buell, and Glenn Humberstone. Oh, I heard a little bit of a ba- That is not so good. Ooh. Looks it's like correction. Ryan Winfeld, Bjorn Ritter, and Aaron C. Hall. Not so uh, well off down there. I want to actually bummer. just take a quick look exactly how did that happen. Here we go. Here's the replay as they're heading into Mercedes. Looks like Ryan Winfield making that dive up the inside. Oh, and a little bit of a defensive move and just... Oh, and that is... Uh, that may be one for the stewards. We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. I see what Ryan was trying to do there, but things unfold a little different in front of him going to that corner because that's a tight, tight one. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just a little bit of a misjudged uh, moment, potentially, and uh, just didn't work out. Yeah, and Florian's not letting uh, Bernardo creep away now, is he? 
Definitely not. Actually, on that note, let's head up to the very front of the field and see how these two are doing, because really this is a duo, not a more. Just two cars. Ben's a cipher just slightly at the edge of that draft, uh, just barely hanging on. If he plays his cards just right, he'll be able to catch this front pack, start challenging for the lead, but the top three is definitely a real great spot to be. Philip the Hammer, uh, starting on that front row, is very, very far back, and a place that he's not used to being at. And here's for not Faria just absolutely starting to walk away from the rest of the field with Florian Capel in tow. Yeah, they're, they're moving there. Sam, good to see him out there too. Uh, you know, that white car, actually, Ben's a cipher. Good to see him back. I, I recognize that white car, and even though those white cars give me nightmares from Bent's and uh, Corey Lazarus because of sheer speed, it's good to see him back out there. <laughs> definitely, definitely give me nightmares. The amount of pace that Ben Cipher is showing, absolutely phenomenal. He has not been in the car seat too long. He's been uh, off for quite a while. Uh, and to come back at it and, and come out swinging right away, it that that's just pure talent. Absolutely loving it. And yeah, saying the fastest right. lap of our race currently with 139.211. That is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, see, it's not always a broadcaster's curse. We just gave him a little push there. Yeah, here is Benjamin Pape. I see car of pill, car. I don't even know how to read that. Car of pills for life. Okay, uh, is the Twitch <laughs> username <laughs> saying, "Hey, go with Benjamin Pape." I love it. Always great to have some friends cheering you on. And there's Benjamin's friend right there. Here's Phil awesome. the Hammer going for some overlap on Frank Smith, trying to get back to the spot that he started the race on, going up the inside. Benjamin, or, or sorry, upside inside of Frank Smith, but backing out in the end. Yeah, it's a dangerous one, eh? That was, how do you pronounce that Spitzker uh, hairpin there, corner number six? Yeah, that's a tough one. It breaking points and it's slick. Uh, I've got it as just the hairpin turn six. I'm not sure what the German name is that for that is, but uh, <laughs> yeah. someone will have to tell me later. Mercedes corner as we're heading into it now with this is Amir Carr, Gregory Vranks, and Misha Berger. And uh, as they head out, and look at that, Jason Lyons in tow. So this is group of four right here. Nice. Going into mm. turn 11, that's mobile one curve. It's a tricky one, eh? Up against the wall like that and then carving in hard to the right. Um, how do you manage that one there, Mike? You get as close as you feel comfortable. And, uh, you, you know, I was actually finding break a little bit later than you think. And the way that you trail your brake into that corner can really rotate the car just right. You gotta make sure the brake bias is set and uh, away you go. It's uh, surprising how late you, on the brakes you can now go with this new car with all these updates. And here we go with Philip Hammer going up the inside of Frank Smith into turn two. Under braking, Philip Hammer able to get up alongside. Not quite actually. Looks like Philip Hammer having some struggles under braking. Everyone able to uh, out brake him. So. Yeah, I feel Phillip's pain here, I, I just at a slower speed in my race. I had a really hard time having the confidence to send it underneath some guys here without taking us both out. I love the way that you say out. It's just absolute music to my ears. No and here, doubt about it. And here we go with Yuri Steinmetz up the inside of Danny Hugendorn into the hairpin, able to take that position off of our Hugendorn right there car 992 is down now one spot out of that reverse grid top eight so danny's gonna have to fight hard if he wants right back into that that sweet spot really yeah i i, I don't think hugendorn's too worried about it. he seems to be you know not the hottest qualifier not the greatest sprint race but uh, in the feature you know second place last round uh, he, he's a racer he'll put it together but you want you want to stay in that top eight uh, for me that that's critical Definitely the top eight's the place to be. Uh, I see Bjorn Ritter has crashed. Let's just take a quick look at how that happened. Here's Aaron Hall, Bjorn Ritter, and oh, looks like Aaron Hall is blinking up on the inside, and that may have been a huge cause to what was happening. Yep, I would have to, I would have to say that blinking may be a cause of that one. Uh, Hard to avoid something you can't see. Oh, I know, and that's you know cool. all about that. Sometimes you're the car that's invisible. <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate it hearing buddies telling me I'm blinking because it's just, uh, it kills the whole vibe sometimes. But uh, hey, I'm in the boonies here. Sorry, lads. Oh, and here we go, moving to Samuel Sproul and Frank Smith's battling it out, heading into turn two. A little bit of a, a shuffling, a 
and uh, under braking that is definitely a danger zone but these drivers are able to manage that just right Samuel Spruill is now ahead we're going to see potentially three wide into the hairpin frame Philip the hammer is not letting off he wants this position he's oh and here we go Whoa. under braking Frank Smith's able to get that spot back but Samuel Spruill on the inside of the hairpin is going to have a better run out of this corner potential oh and here we go Frank Smith's looks like he is through he's on the left lane position hanging towards Mercedes and that is the place to be and he has made the pass on Samuel Spruill and now Philip nice the move, oh, move down the inside but Samuel Spruill not able to gain that overlap under breaking and that's bringing the likes of Yuri Steinmetz right in behind this group and if they're not careful all this battling is going to open up the door for Yuri Steinmetz to start walking on through and here goes Philip Hammer into mobile one corner getting some overlap Ooh. on Spruill really pushing the issue wanting to get by he's gonna have to go around the outside of sack is that called sax uh, <laughs> i don't think that's the right way to say it but sax <laughs> well you're coming into sud curve there 15 and 16 there so it could be who knows man that's that's, that's wild nobody wants um hammer in the rear view mirror and you know so smets got disposed of spruler and took off and sprule all he wants to do is get away from hammer here he's putting up a good fight it's a it's nice clean dice here but uh, hammer's just applying the pressure lap after lap and uh, and something's gonna crack here Definitely. And so Frank Smith's having made his way through. Now Philip the Hammer is trying to find his way through. Uh, all of these drivers have pace, including Samuel Spruill. So this is just not as simple as, oh, one driver makes it on through and it's just easy like that. It is not that easy. All of these drivers are very competent in all of their own ways. And here we go. Philip the Hammer on the outside into the hairpin. Samuel K. Spruill hitting the brakes. You can see those the nose diving under the braking. Oh, and an attempt to do an over-under, not quite making it happen uh, from car number 60. A little bit of a tap, love tap from Yuri Steinmetz to say, hey, buddy, get going, get on going, get on that throttle. Let, you know, and here we go into Mercedes. Jeez, what a what a dice here. I, I like what I'm seeing from Sam here. He, he's you know, maybe a little off pace here, but he's holding his own because he knows if he opens that up, Bye bye, top uh, top eight, and he's in that uh, tough spot there. So, if he can hold on, he's got what? What do we got here? Three and a half, four minutes left. Um, but man, Hammer and these guys behind him, holy smokes! Definitely, all three of these drivers behind Samuel Spruill are very confident drivers and very aggressive in in wanting to get by. Uh, so Samuel is gonna have to be very very careful because if he lets one by, he's gonna let them all by. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's letting his hair down. Just go for it, Sam. Um, but Hugendorn's going to want it. Stein at spots too. So, geez, and right, not that far behind them, there's another stream of cars. <laughs> and here we go, heading towards turn two. Philip Hammer's getting an excellent run out of the first turn, heading towards turn two, and up the inside, under braking, is he able to get, the, oh, and he's able to get quite a bit ahead, and he definitely has the favorable lane position, heading towards the hairpin, and then now that's opened up the door potentially for Yuri Steinmetz to break on through. Yuri Steinmetz is going to battle the car 66, and they are going to have to go two by two into the braking zone with Yuri Steinmetz having a draft. He's going to there you go under breaking the nose dives down as the weight transfers forward philip the hammer has made his way through and now yuri steinmetz is getting an excellent exit out of the hairpin and favorable lane position heading into mercedes on car 66 so here's 164 green on the inside of mercedes and there is two cars now on through Samuel Spruill and Danny Hugendorn is now looking to get back into that reverse grid top eight and as we head around turn number nine ten towards mobile one so really nice passing really nice uh, respect from these drivers here too you know getting through those tough sections Sam's really got that uh, hairpin Spitzker hairpin turn six dialed in no one's really touching him there but just enough to let that guy squeak by him um, or should I say Steinmetz Bimes, and now he's got Hugendorn. What do you got here there, Mike? This is a nice little dice here, too. This is Amir Carr leading Misha Berger and Gregory Vranks. These guys have been at it for many, many laps. And if, again, they're not careful, uh, as, as uh, but you know you gotta be aggressive. You gotta be aggressive. You gotta make every position count. You, and so, but if they're not too careful, 
they are going to have Jason Lyons on the back of them. It looks like he is catching up. Uh, so this is going to be really, really an intense fight. We have one lap to go. This is our final lap. And so this is a pack being led once again by Amir Carr, Misha Berger directly behind and Gregory Ranks. A little bit of a draft train. So I'm really curious to see. Oh, Misha Berger, not as great of an exit out of turn two as he would have hoped. And he is now at risk for losing his 15th position here to Gregory Ranks, who is coming up alongside Misha Berger, throwing that defensive line. He wants that inside, coming across under breaking to still have a little bit of a favorable line. Gregory Ranks, oh, Oh, maybe a little bit too excited under braking, trying a little bit too hard to get up alongside and around. Now we're heading too wide towards Mercedes corner. Oh, and so Gregory oh. Franks actually backs out. Oh, jeez, that is intense. And here we go, Misha Berger and Gregory Ranks now too uh -oh. wide. And this is absolute wonderful battling. Uh, and this is just an absolute back and forth. Gregory Ranks wants by Misha Berger throwing the defensive lines, the offensive lines, and just absolutely wonderful. Oh. I had a little mental slip there. I forgot I was in the broadcast. I was just enjoying the racing so much. And here we go. I just barely missed it. There is Bernardo Faria coming across nice. that finish line in P1. Congratulations, Bernardo Faria, for winning our sprint race. And Florian Kappel for coming in P2. That is a wonderful pace all of these drivers had up front. Benza Cypher rounding out our top three. Benjamin Pape, and here we go. And there is the two, Gregory Ranks and Misha Berger, coming across the finish line. Misha Berger was able to stay ahead. Um, and there is a whole bunch of cars. Before we lose it... I want to see Will Alexander Wilford crash. I want to take a look exactly how did that one happen. Uh, as we here is heading into Saks, and oh, uh, yeah, oh, that is can happen easy there. It's a hot breaking zone. That's a bummer. Hopefully his pit crew can get his car back in shape and he's not injured from that one. Yeah, definitely. You definitely never want to see that one happen. It's uh, unfortunate in every direction, and uh, I don't know what else to say about that one, but uh, at least we have another race, and that's partially why I love the double races. A uh, little bit of a yep. mistake in the first race, and you've got a second chance at it. And, you know, it's... Uh, that was a great sprint race. Kudos yeah. to Sam Spool out under attack that whole time to hang on to eighth there. He's going to take her inverted grid and take the pole. And uh, wow, look at that. Uh, Ferrari making a statement. Two point second lead on Kappel. Yeah, absolute statement. Dominant win from Bernardo Faria. Expect absolutely nothing less from him. Uh, Florian Kappel showing he's got pace as well. Bensa Cypher four seconds back. And then from there, quite a distance uh, to Benjamin Pape in fourth. Frank Smith's in fifth. Philip Hammer in sixth. So he lost a lot of spots and able to gain it back just a little. Uh, but that's going to put him in a place he's not used to being in for that sprint race when it's reverse grid up at the very front. Uh, so that's going to benefit him in some ways, but uh, he's losing points too. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, you got to go get those points for sure. Every point, matter, every point matters, every position matters. So he is losing points from that. You may think, oh, you know, it's really great to get into that, uh, the reverse grid and the, the sweet spot for the feature. And eh, eh, not so good. Uh, Samuel, Yuri Steinmetz in seventh, Samuel K. Spruill in eighth, Danny Hugendorn in ninth, just barely missing out from that reverse grid. Thorsten Seifer in 10th, Lee Holmes in 11th, Alejandro Tosi in 12th, Amir Carr, Misha Berger, Gregory Ranks, Jason Lyons, Alexander Wilford, Francois, Schink out, Glenn Humberstone, Ruben Van Buell, Thomas Pod Procky, Steve Kleis, Mark Oliver, Barry Clayton, Alexander Redhead, Edwin Van Driel, Craig Schill, Bjorn Ritter, Aaron Hall, Gordon Ramsay, Philip Straffarelli, Ryan Winfeld, uh, as way in the back as we saw. Uh, for those reasons we saw. Bruno Heinrich, I believe it was because he missed the hairpin on that first lap, second lap, something like that. Uh, but that was where Bruno Heinrich disappeared off to. Yep. yep. So yeah, what are your thoughts? For what are your top three points for this next uh, race? Top three, definitely off the start, as you can see in the sprint race. Don't be cooking those tires. Don't spin. Get off the line good and uh, start cutting in your laps. Uh, two would be, hey, we got to update to the car, and maybe someone don't have as much seat time. Let the race come. And a lot of my officials that I was in this week, uh, the fast guys were setting their best laps near the last uh, quarter of the race. So uh, there's something different going on with the tires. Don't ask me, but that's what I saw. And um, 
third, you the pecking order's in place. You, we're round five. Um, you know where you stand. Own it and uh, go for, go for the win, guys. It's uh, it's it's we're in the almost in the midway of our season. Uh, time to let your hair down and uh, make a push to the end. Yeah, I think my top three points is get a good start. Uh, understand how the breaking will work for turn two and the hairpin mm. uh because if you're not careful and understanding of exactly how to break the car uh how to not break the car but break the car to slow it down and and how that all works on that first lap you're going to be in a lot of trouble you can gain a lot of positions now on that first lap and here we go the lights are up in the middle of the screen the engines are revving we got five lights Lights are off and away we go. We got everyone having an excellent start. It looks like Danny Hugendorn X. Oh no, and Thorsten Cypher going a little bit sideways. Uh, fortunately for a lot of cars, um, they're able to avoid. Oh, that looks like Bjorn Ritter and 923. I'm not sure who that is. And 909, uh, let's keep, look forward just a little bit. We'll look back at that later. Bernardo Faria having an excellent sprint race getting up into the seventh position already following Bensa Cypher Danny Hugendorn on the outside well, now it's soon to be the inside oh what the something's happening jeez jeez that is Shink and Wilford and that is oh, oh that is gonna be an interesting <laughs> nice move Ramsey to avoid that one holy smokes we have a lot going on we're gonna try and cover all of it uh, we're gonna go back to the replays if we have any moment that we can go back to the replay oh Hugendorn that's a shame oh and there goes Hugendorn and that's luck oh he's going off he has decided to tow I'm not sure why oh, that's a bummer that is an absolute bummer. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the leader of the race right now. we got Philip Hammer in the lead. Samuel K. Spruill in second. Yuri Steinmetz, Benjamin Pape. Uh, oh, and I still hear some crashing in the background. We're going to ignore that for a moment. Uh, because we want to look at some actual racing here instead of just door banging here. Bar Bernardo Faria. Oh, being real aggressive on Bensa Cypher. Able to get through just barely. A little bit of door banging. And, that, and that's just absolute hard racing from Bernardo Faria. Making it work the best he can. Uh, Bensa Cypher with all that pace. He's now got a, a tough field behind him. Frank Smith, Lee Holmes, Alejandro Tosi right there in tow. Uh, so I'm real curious to see how this goes goes forward as our next 28 minutes goes on uh this is a very long race as you know and here we go three wide into turn two frank smith's up the inside of ben cypher alejandro tosi able to make uh, take oh, advantage of that and something is wrong with ben cypher that's too bad look it's sputtering or something you know like, there may have been a slowdown or something there oh uh, maybe when he went off the track with uh faria there that's a shame that's too bad that is an absolute shame for Ben Cypher. Luckily, there's a long race ahead still, and he can try and make up some of that uh, yeah, lost pace. Yeah, he's a guy that can make up that time. He, he, he Watch for his charge from the back here. That'll be good. And Ramsey's behind him, too. He's going to push. Oh, and here we go. This is Mark Oliver up the inside of who's 555. That looks like... Uh, no, that is not Francois Schenck. Uh, that is Thomas, Thomas Pro Proc Good eye, good eye. Nice. There's a little scrap here, that's for sure. Here is Alexander Wilford and Bjorn Ritter in a place that they... Oh, actually, here we go. A little further forward, Van Driel. Oh, and he, Van Driel's just getting past. Let's go right back to Wilford and Bjorn Ritter. Bjorn Ritter, oh, maybe he's not enjoying the updates to his car in the way <laughs> that he was hoping. Uh, just going a little bit wide under braking. Wow. Hopped in that curb like you're not really supposed to. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. He's just not having a great time out there, it's looking like to me. Uh, but Bjorn Ritter in the past has had amazing pace, so I definitely oh, expect yeah. him to bounce back in absolute no time at all. I really expect it. Yeah, he's got some speed, and you can see when he, Bjorn gets a good start, he could really put some damage on him. Another one, Sam under attack there. Yep, Sam is under attack from Yuri Steinmetz, and always oh, Bernardo Faria being real aggressive, trying to go up the outside, the inside, and here we go. We're going to have a three wide into the hairpin. Bar Bernardo Faria on the outside. Oh, Bernardo Faria. Oh, what the? I. What? 
I have no idea what just happened there, but holy smokes, <laughs> Yuri Steinmetz on the worst end of that one. I I feel bad for him. My heart goes out to him on that one. Um, but Bernardo Farah is now through, and Samuel Spru. I want to actually take a look at exactly what happened on that one because uh, that was a little wild. Seemed like a little excessive neck coat or something there, but geez, Ferrari has made his way through. The race is on. He's got uh, 3.9 seconds to click off to get uh, to Hammer if he could do it. Definitely. Let's just change the camera view just slightly so we can try and get a better view. And here we go. Oh, and Samuel Spruill, just a little bit of a oh, shift God. over. Um, and it looks like that little bit of a shift over was the end of Yuri Steinmetz's race for, uh, that is absolutely like weird. Um, a little door to door bump like that. I mean, you know, Sam didn't do that on purpose. He didn't want that to happen, but man, sucks to have Yuri out like that. Yeah, definitely. My heart goes out to him. I gotta say, I never want to see something like that happen. And, uh, yeah. Yep. So now we have Philip the Hammer in the very front of this race with a 4.4 second gap to Bernardo Faria, who is trying to maximize his points for this race. He now has 50, if, if he holds this position, he'll have 59 points gained. 60 points, of course, is the maximum anyone can gain in the race. Um, yeah, that is exactly it. Um, maximum you can gain is 60, so he needs one more position for a full points ride in this race. And uh, the one person in his way of that is Philip Hamburg, our current season points leader. So it's going to be real interesting to see how this plays out as this race goes on. We got 24 minutes to go, and that is a long time to go to hold off a driver such as uh, Bernardo Faria. Yeah, he's off to a good start. You know, it was 3.9 when uh, Fari got second. Now he's opened it up a little bit. And uh, we're four laps in. All the tires are right where they need to be. And now it's uh, show your strut your stuff there, boys, because uh, no excuses. Set your fast times now. You can get it in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's Bensa Cypher on a mere car, and he is trying to get right back to where he started uh, and ha having a tough time at that. And a mere car is definitely not letting him by easy. These two are breaking away just a slightly from uh, Jason Lyons, who's right behind him. Ben Cypher, oh, choosing not to poke a nose and get aggressive in that moment. And uh, he's so he's going to wait it out, I'm sure, for this run onto the start finish straight here we go is Bensa Cypher wow. gonna gain some overlap a mere car looks like he is letting him through and wants to follow in tow I, honestly I would say that's actually a smart move uh, let the oh, car yeah. who you know is faster get by and break away from Jason Lyons who's that last car back there yep I uh, got a nice drive by all our amateurs Holmes Berger and Lyons the top three there Lyons got uh, some angry hard chargers behind him though Ramsey up 18 spots and Bruno Heinrich behind him up 20 so uh, play nice and get through there and latch onto him Here's Benjamin DePape going on the inside of Samuel K. Spruill into the hairpin and making his way on through. Samuel K. Spruill not getting the perfect eggs that he wanted and getting bumped uh, to say, hey, go faster, go faster from Frank Smith's directly behind him. Frank Smith's wanting to get on through Camuel Samuel K. Spruill as well. Here we go. He's going to dive up the inside. And there you go. Frank Smith's up the inside in the Mercedes. Samuel K. Spruill is giving that space that he's required to give him and able to still stay ahead. Excellent battling between these two. And here we go. Frank Smith's doing an over-under as we head into Mobile One Curve right here. And the inside is where you want to be. And that is where That's Frank fast. Smith's is. That beautiful, beautiful pass. Throwing the defensive lines. And here we go. Samuel K. Spruill now under fire. Uh, he definitely is in Hell's Kitchen as we head around the last oh, yeah. few sequences of this lap he now has Alejandro Tosi and Lee Holmes directly behind who are going to be looking to get through him and Misha Berger there is uh, no shortage of tough customers in his rearview mirror <laughs> yeah, I like how Smith's kind of broke the seal to get by Sproul there and then Tosi and Holmes are on him like a dog on a piece of meat trying to get through there but uh, Sam's like no 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 you don't get to go through that easy you got to work for it just like uh, Smith's did 
Definitely here is Lee Holmes trying to make a pass on Alejandro Tosi, not able to get uh, alongside soon enough. He's going to have to back out just slightly and go for the draft down the straight into that hairpin. But of course, Alejandro Tosi has that draft from Samuel Case Brule just up ahead of him. Uh, so with this draft train, this DRS train, it's not going to be easy to get there under break, uh, by the time the breaking zone comes. And as you see right here, not able to get up alongside. So they're going to have to wait for a little bit of an opening at some other point in their lap yeah that that hairpin too is such a tough space to pass braking harder than you're on the gas hard so everything's on the edge of traction there Ooh, look at this one Ooh, look at this one hairpin. And here is our primary passing zone in this lap on this track. And here's Thorsten Seifert going up the inside of Mark Oliver. Mark Oliver turning in a little bit, turning in on Thorsten Seifert. But Thorsten Seifert's car able to take a little bit of door bagging. He is on through. And here's Francois Schink now challenging into Mercedes corner. Going to have to go around the outside if he wants to make this work. Longer distance traveled, not able to get the power down in time. And so that's left Mark Oliver ahead of Francois Schink. Thomas Pop Rocky is directly behind and if you don't look uh don't look too far back because you also got glenn humberstone steve Clyde. oh not steve Clyde. glenn humberstone and uh i'm not sure who that is i think that's philip straffarelli who's a lap down so he's not exactly Every. eligible to join this battle but he is there <laughs> look at these cars they're all war torn all beat up uh having some contact throughout the race already but they're, they're not letting it slow them down they're all ripping right now Oh, and there's, there is Glenn Humberstone going up the inside of Pod Procky around that sequence, taking advantage of a little bit of a mistake from Pod Procky, and uh, he has made his way through. Nice pass. Beautiful pass. You know, this is what's so lovely about all that tight racing. Just one tiny little mistake, and you're going to lose a spot or gain a spot. Um, and you just have to be ready to take advantage of that, just as Glenn Humberstone did right there. Oh, and it looks like Mark Oliver has gone off. He lit his tires up using a little bit too much throttle and has gone off, and now is not a part of this equation anymore. Ouch. Usually you get away with just a little slide there, but man, that, that was a punishing one right off the track like that. But that's a spot where it happens, breaking hard like that and turning in. Definitely. Uh, I know I've done that a few times. I'm sure you've done that in practice. Never. Uh, hopefully not the race every time i nail it. oh you're you're perfect absolutely perfect wonderfully sparkly <laughs> clean i love it not quite <laughs> <laughs> Here is Jason Lyons with Gordon Ramsay in tow. Gordon Ramsay, uh, rumor has it, is a reformed driver over <laughs> what we've known of him in past seasons. He is uh, trying to focus more on cleaner driving, cleaner attitude, uh, cleaner mindset, mind frame, all of that. Uh, make passes that don't... Um, destroy the other person's race and so here you see gordon ramsay up 18 spots total and uh, trying to find a clean way through jason wow. lyons that's awesome a really good comeback story there 18 points heinrich right behind him doing the same thing and uh geez that's that's seen a lot of traffic oh that's like the 405 here in la he's just picking them off <laughs> absolutely being aggressive but not too aggressive and that's what we like to see of our drivers is that calculated risk where you're not going to put everyone else's race around you at risk as well hey apologies mike and uh, the drivers but i gotta run good luck to everyone okay i'll see you later and i know you're heading off to your da daughter's dance class uh, thanks for joining us for the time that you could and uh, have a good day man thanks man all the best i'll see you later bud and now that I'm all alone in this broadcast booth, I can see Corey Lazarus in our chat saying the hammer stretching that lead. Go, so go, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got uh, Corey Lazarus is now the father of Philip the Hammer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that. So you, that is just in news, just in. So Philip the Hammer, we're gonna take a little quick peek at him in P1. He is up two spots total and not challenged too much. Having a great run, one thirty nine point three. Bernardo Farias, second position, coming across that start finish line right now, one forty point. 
three. So one second difference in lap times. Uh, so at that current rate, Bernardo is not going to catch him, but at least he is far enough ahead of Benjamin Pape that he doesn't have too much to worry about. It's still a really great spot for race points and uh, definitely a, a, a place to be happy in. Here is Frank Smith being followed, uh, following Benjamin Pape. Not too far back. You can also see Samuel K. Spruill being followed by Alejandro Tosi. And a little bit further back is Lee Holmes. Up ahead, it looks like Frank Smith's not able to gain that overlap. Oh, I see here a little bit of banging. Nope. And everyone is actually A-OK. -okay. I'm going to take a quick look here at Francois Schenk, who's following Thorsten Seifert. Thorsten Seifert down seven spots total um, from, I'm not sure what happened earlier. We'll have to see when we got some time, but there's so much action we can't look away as they head into that breaking zone. Thorsten Seifert still ahead of Francois Schenk. Francois Schenk trying to find his way through. And Steve, here we go. Two wide into the hairpin. Alexander Wilford up the left side. Steve Kleis in the inside line, able to stay ahead of Wilford. Wilford, Wilford getting an excellent exit though. Is he going to be able to get up ahead? Nope, and he is not able to do it. Uh, Steve Kleis has that damage on his car, so he, he has the challenging drive ahead of him if he's going to survive for another 15 full minutes. Uh, that arrow damage and all that, but Steve Kleis is one competent driver. I know he's raced a lot in real life. Um, actually, funny story about Steve Kleis. All as just as Alexander Wilford starting to close that gap even more. Is he going to think about that uh, making the dive up the inside into socks? And I know nope, he's going to have to stay ahead through the rest of the stadium. Funny story about Steve Kleis is uh, his first race here. <laughs> I uh, I mentioned his name incorrectly, and his girlfriend ended up texting him saying, "Hey, how how does someone get your name wrong? It's so easy." And so I thought that was hilarious. And uh, uh, yeah, I just absolutely didn't do my homework on that one, and I apologize to Steve for that. And it's Steve Kleis from my understanding. And here we go. Oh, Steve did not get the turn one that he wanted. And that is going to allow Philip Straffarelli, who actually is a lap down, to get try and unlap himself from these drivers. So Alexander Wilford, even though he bumped him, he did give up that position. Uh, he didn't want to get through in on those grounds. And uh, yeah, they're going to live to fight another lap. Oh! Francois Schink locking up under braking into that hairpin and that leaves Thorsten Seifert now the easy breakaway. Hopefully his car is not too damaged after that one. I'm going to look a little further up. Alejandro Tosi, he is getting real aggressive on Samuel K. Spruill up here. Oh, and I heard someone spinning. Who is that? That's Misha Berger. Misha Berger has went off the track. He may be uh, a little bit too excited on the throttle. I didn't hear any door banging, so I think that was a very much a self-inflicted injury. Here we have Bensa Cypher, who did end up getting by a mere car eventually. Uh, so that, I want to actually know. Yeah. So Bensa Cypher did get by, so he's going to have to make up a lot of ground if he wants to get back to Lee Holmes. Uh, but he is still in a real great spot. He's down only two total and has a lot of time left to gain some of those spots back. There is Barry Clayton going wide off the track in that final stadium portion. And let's take a quickie look at Bruno Heinrich. Gordon Ramsay did break on through. I want to see if I can find that pass. Here we go. Here's the pass on Jason Lyons. Nice, easy one into the hairpin. Gordon Ramsay taking that inside lane. And uh, Bruno Heinrich a little bit aggressive on Jason Lyons and giving that position back. That is definitely the gentleman in Bruno right there. And so that is the story of how Gordon Ramsay got on through. Now Bruno Heinrich is still behind Jason Lyons, so he's going to have to find that way through still. Uh, Misha Berger much further back after his spin still in 13th, so it's not a horrible spot to be yet. And uh, yeah, definitely the challenge of these cars is keeping that rear end in check. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult, I got to say. Um, so doing it for a whole race i think the tires actually end up coming in a little better at the end as the fuel load decreases how do you pronounce steve Kleis? we need to know <laughs> steve Kleis, like claw eyes 
That is, uh, I believe that's how it is. I see in the chat asking, I believe that's how it is. He, he sent me a voice clip of him doing it, and I, th I think I got it. If not, he's gonna, I'm sure, give me crap for it after this race. <laughs> Especially since I highlighted it. I'm gonna throw myself under the bus. <laughs> that's not too bad. I, I could do worse. I said clays before. So, I'm gonna take a look at Alejandro Tosi, I think he's going down the back straight right now on Samuel K. Sproul. He's gonna have an opportunity to make some overlap as they head into the hairpin. Is he gonna go for it? He's gonna go for that line inside, that inside dive on, uh, not able to actually get the overlap, backing out and wanting to try and wait for another opportunity. Uh, he has Lee Holmes directly behind him, so if he's not careful, a little bit too much battling, it's gonna become a three-way tango, and that is definitely not what Alejandro wants in his, uh, in his race. So I'm pretty sure that he's got that in the back of his mind, that he does. He wants to keep Lee Holmes out of it and make this only a two-way battle. Uh, he is being real aggressive as he's got the inside lane into Mobile One Curve, and that is gonna be a real tough position for Sam Okay Sproul to guard and he backs out, thinks better of it, and tucks in behind Alejandro Tosi. And now that's brought Lee Holmes right into the mix. He is right on the real, rear end of Samuel K. Spruill, and, and Samuel K. Spruill is at risk of losing another position. He's down five already. The pace of this field is absolutely wonderful, I gotta say. That I gotta say. And Cara Pills for life, as you say, is the uh, cheapest beer out there in Belgium. I love it. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love Belgian beer. But anyways, uh, I'm going to take a look at Bruno Heinrich, who is real close, closer than ever to Jason Lyons, within three tenths. And so is he going to make a move heading into turn two under breaking? Jason Lyons throwing that defensive line. He wants him to go around the outside longer distance traveled. Bruno Heinrich is this the over under that we were expecting and it is getting an excellent exit. Not able to get that tire up though. And who is going to follow Gordon Ramsay's draft? It looks like Jason Lyons does not have that draft anymore on the outside. That is going to help Bruno Heinrich get closer and closer, further ahead in this break. And so you can see the nose dive under braking. Jason Lyons trying to control that car on the inside. Bruno Heinrich got to get the power down on the outside and not able to make it happen. And there you go. Wow. Jason Lyons staying ahead. Here is Frank Smith making a pass on Benjamin DePape for P3. Let's just take a quick look on our replay. How exactly did this one happen into Mercedes? Frank Smith making a, a brave dive up the inside of Mercedes on Benjamin DePape, making it work, incident free, and away Frank Smith goes into P3. What a beautiful move. That He felt the door was wide open. He walked on through, and, uh, and now he's up one more spot. So where is Bruno Heinrich? Here we go. So this is a pack now led by Gordon Ramsay, car number 22 in that Scotland flag car. Uh, Jason Lyons, car 33 in tow. Jason Lyons was our season champion of amateur division last season. Uh, he is now with the tough, tough field that we're seeing, not even in the top three. And that is just an absolute show of uh, the growth that this league has seen, which is absolutely wonderful. Here, here's Bruno Heinrich making a dive up the inside on Jason Lyons and he now has that favorable lane position as they head towards the hairpin and Bruno Heinrich on the right Jason Lyons on the left and I don't think J uh, Jason Lyons is going to be able to hold him off any longer and Bruno Heinrich is now ahead. Is Bruno going to have to throw that defensive line or is he going to trust Jason Lyons? Jason Lyons does go for that inside lane position under braking but not quite able to get up alongside so Bruno Heinrich is now officially through Jason Lyons is down one spot still four gains so a great place to be for those amateur uh, division championship points this season uh, let's take a quickie look at Alexander Wilfer. It looks like his car is still good. He did not have a great race at Magni Coors, so <laughs> you know what? To see his car in one piece with no damage, that's uh, that's actually um, a great spot to be. So there's Alexander Wilfer making a dive on Barry Clayton up the inside into the hairpin, making a pass. What a nice move from Wilford. And away he goes. And now that we have a chance, I think I can take a look at exactly what happened Oh, 
Florian Capo crashed. I want to see how that one happened. This was in the very beginning of the race. How did Florian Capo crash? Oh! And that was, uh, that looked like Thorsten Seifert. Oh, and that is a very unfortunate beginning to a race. <laughs> One driver, and you know, that's just the risk of the standing start. I feel bad for him. Once again, my heart goes out to him. My heart's going out to lots of people, and uh, I don't know. I just like to think I have a big heart that goes out to give people hugs. <laughs> but anyways, here we got we got Frank Smith's Benjamin Pop to Pope. Benjamin is not letting Frank Smith's go. He is still hot on his tail into that hairpin. Both of them getting an excellent exit as they head towards Mercedes curve. So this will get real spicy real quick. And here we go. Is Benjamin going to go for that aggressive move up the inside? No, he is going to wait it out. He's trying to find a, a way to solve the puzzle of Frank Smith. Frank Smith's having some seriously strong pace this evening. Great pass into Mercedes earlier, and he is still ahead. And so Benjamin's got uh, quite a task on his hands to get up ahead of him. Here is Alejandro Tosi, who is on his own. He's in a nice, happy island there. Samuel K. Sproul still ahead of Lee Holmes. And Benza Cipher. Uh, it looks like he is now caught up to this pack oh and Jason Lyons is now being challenged by Gordon Ramsay oh Gordon Ramsay getting a little bit wild okay so I'm gonna head right up into this pack here of Bensa Cypher who showed great pace in that sprint race being right near that lead pack uh, so I do expect him to start making some moves on Lee Holmes is he gonna go up for the inside line is he gonna wait after turn one he's gonna wait after turn one and he's gonna make his run here he gets an excellent exit Lee Holmes not showing any defensive lines. Very, very brave of Lee Holmes to not show any defensive lines, I gotta say. And that's allowed Bensa Cypher to get up the inside. Is he able to hold on to that overlap as they head around that second, third corner? And he is. So Bensa Cypher now has a much favorable lane position as they head towards the hairpin down this back straight. And so that is now gonna be an easy position taken away from Lee Holmes. Here they go under, breaking Bensa Cypher, giving only a few inches of space, and there you go. Bensa Cypher is now through with that strong pace. He's now got Samuel K. Sproul ahead of him. Back to Alexander Wilfert, and ahead of him is Thomas Pod Procky. Thomas Pod Procky's car, no, uh, no worse for the wear, of course, because it's still driving. Yeah, a little bit of front end damage, and that's okay. Unfortunately, we're now at a very long straightaway, a very high speed, and that aerodynamic damage is not going to help him right about here. So, you now Gordon is in the pits. I have no idea what's happening to that. I, something has happened to Gordon. Uh, Hopefully he can come back out at some point, but yeah, maybe technical error, something, anything. I have no idea. Unfortunate to see him retire. He was up so many spots, and uh, it was just uh, it was really great to see him on that run. Unfortunate that it had to end. We have three minutes left in our race, so we're going to just be clicking around this field and seeing who is where. Um, we have currently... I think the best battle on our field right now is Samuel K. Sproul, Bensa, Cypher, Lee Holmes. And if we look a little further forward, we got Frank Smith with Benjamin Pape. Benjamin Pape not going to be able to get up alongside, I don't think, as we head towards the hairpin. So he's going to have to find another way through. We see Philip Hammer is just putting in lap after lap. Absolute wonderful drive from Philip Hammer. This is, I would call this the recovery drive. Uh, given how his sprint race went 13 seconds ahead you can see on our track map how far 13 seconds is uh, given on that track map with the distance between these two and how far back three four five and so on are from Bernardo Faria uh, I want to take a quickie look at our weather just to see what these drivers are dealing with you can see 32 Celsius track temp so it's decently hot out there around the same conditions as we saw on Thursday. So these drivers just absolutely all on a league, all in the league of their own at the very front. 
So Frank Smith's coming through the stadium. This is called Suit Curve. I don't think that's exactly a German flair to how you say it. Suit Curve. I, I, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. Here we go. Uh, as they head on to that start-finish straight, I think this may be the final lap or... If Philip Hammer's pace is fast enough, and I think it is, he may trigger one more lap and they'll do a 19 total. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Gregory Vranks and see where he's at. So Jason Lyons has now been caught up by Gregory Vranks. So Gregory hot on the tail as he exits turn one, heading towards the turn two, brings on Jason Lyons, throwing the defensive line. He wants Gregory to go round the outside, and that is going to bring Misha Berger ever closer from them heading out of that corner, slower than uh, normal with a normal racing line. Gregory doing that over, under, gaining some overlap and taking a shorter distance travel. What happened to Frank Smith? Something's happened to Frank Smith. He's just absolutely disappeared. I have no idea. Um, that is real strange, I gotta say. Uh, let's get back to the action because there's still lots of action. Uh, Frank Smith's heading down that timing chart. I have no idea why. I wish I did, but, uh, here we go. Here is Gregory, Gregory Vranks making that pass on Jason Lyons. Here is that defensive line th being thrown on Misha Berger from Jason Lyons as they head in the Mercedes curve. Jason Lyons able to stay ahead, and I actually want to just take a quickie look at um, that pass. Here is... Oh, there we go. There it is. There is the pass. Here it is. Gregory Vranks going round the outside into that hairpin. Jason Lyons, of course, has that inside line. And is there an over-under? And there it is. There is the over-under. And that allowed Misha Berger to get right up alongside and start battling on him there, too. Uh, so we now do have one more lap to go. We have 19 laps total. So Philip Hammer triggered the extra lap from his extremely fast pace. And Frank Smith is just out. I feel bad for the dude. I gotta say, here is Lee Holmes and Samuel K. Spruill battling it out. It looks like Bensa Cypher did make his way through, and let's see how did Bensa Cypher break through. So heading, oh, there it is, just a little bit going wild from Samuel K. Spruill, and that allowed Bensa Cypher through. And here right now is Lee Holmes trying to break his way through in, uh, the Samuel K. Spruill train, and there it is into the hairpin and out of the hairpin. Misha Berger going into the hairpin with Jason Lyons right now. Jason Lyons not liking the hairpin too much now, I'm sure, after losing quite a few spots there. Uh, Misha Berger not able to make the pass, still behind. And here we go. Here is Philip the Hammer coming around that final turn one last time, taking that checkered flag. You can see Barney in the, fl the timing tower waving the checkered flag to car number 60. Congratulations for Philip Hammer winning our sprint race with a commanding lead. Here is P2 Bernardo Faria coming across in second position. Congratulations, Bernardo Faria, for being our race points winner. Here is... I'm actually going to take... Oh, I'm gonna, I'll take a look at that one after. Um, here is Benjamin Pape coming across in third position. Congratulations, Benjamin Pape rounding out that podium in third position. Now, Andrew Tosi having a great drive, much better than it was in Magna Coors. Benz is Cypher, great drive for his first time back after a long hiatus. Samuel K. Spruill in seventh. Amir Carr in eighth. And here's Misha Berger. I want to actually take a quickie look. How did Misha Berger go off the track? Here is Misha Berger. Oh, aggressive in Mobile One. A little bit too aggressive. Wanted on through and it just did not pay off. Fortunately, incident free for all of them. Uh, Misha Berger going a little bit further down that list than he was hoping. He wanted to be up, down, but uh, once again, 13 is not a bad place to be. Uh, following along with Glenn Humberstones, who still has not finished the race, he is still going. That is just an absolute testament to the pace of the front pack that we're this far down, and these guys are still driving on their final lap. So, <laughs> wow, what a, what a fast group we've got! Absolutely love it. The level of competition out there is addictive absolutely addictive if anyone wants to come into the broadcast booth i'd love to have you right about now um i am in the interview booth so if you want to come on over just jump in and we'll be able to do an interview and uh yeah um but i do want to pull up 
now that everyone has finished. I think everyone has finished. Let's pull up our feature race results. Here is, here is our feature race results. So once again, congratulations to Philip the Hammer for winning our feature race. Uh, definitely a turnaround evening for Philip Hammer. Not such a great time in his sprint race. Turning around and able to still gain some great points for his season. Uh, Bernardo Faria, I, you know, I read that he hasn't been enjoying this new car too much, and I hope that this this race this evening uh, afternoon for for Bernardo of course in Brazil has um, has changed his thoughts on the car and I hope to see more of him I absolutely love seeing uh, his skill his racecraft and his presence out there in our field it's really wonderful to have him out there every time he can make it and I just hope to see more uh, Benjamin de Pape from I believe he's from South America uh, just showing absolute strong pace in both races. Great racecraft, great pace, great patience, and ending up in third position. Uh, <laughs> definitely aided by Frank Smith. I'm not sure what happened. He just absolutely disconnected there. But um, I feel bad for the guy. And yeah, Alejandro Tosi, after not great uh, race at Magna Coors, coming in fourth position Bensa Cypher in fifth Lee Holmes current leader of the amateur division in points um, showing why by having such strong pace he didn't begin the season very well but you know he turned that around he <laughs> you could almost say he was a heap of garbage at the beginning and now he's sparkled that clean into a nice shiny diamond and so we don't we don't punish drivers of course for improving as the season goes on so yeah, what can you say? The guy improved. He didn't qualify in his first three races within the pro division. He's just on that edge, but he's improved since then, and he's now uh, he's just showing that he is a, a very competent driver. Samuel K. Spruill in seventh. Amir Carr in eighth, having a great finish. Uh, Bruno Heinrich up <laughs> absolutely amazing amount of spots to end in P9. Gregory Franks in 10. Jason Lyons in 11. We've got Ruben Van Buell. We actually didn't cover Ruben Van Buell. I'd love to see him out again. I'd love to uh, cover him and his driving uh, more next time, next time around. Misha Berger in 13. Thorsten Seifert in 14. Thomas Pod Brocky in 15. Barry Clayton in 16. He is one of the top three amateur drivers uh, before this race in season standings. So I'm really curious to see how that goes. Alexander Wilford in 17. He was one of our top amateur drivers last season. And with such a large amateur division now in this current season, it's really interesting to see Jason Lyons and Alexander Wilford, who are our top amateur drivers, Drivers last season, how they're they're stacking up against this season's uh, field. Glenn Humberstone in 18th, which is a great spot to finish still for Glenn. Edwin Van Driel, Mark Oliver, Aaron C. Hall, Gordon Ramsey, Philip Straffarelli, Alexander Redhead, Frank Smiths, uh, Steve Kleis, Francois Schink, Craig Schill, Yuri Steinmetz had a real bad <laughs> race start. I saw that. Uh, I think he was involved in that chaos. I feel bad for him on that one. Uh, Bjorn Ritter, Florian Kappel, as we saw, Danny Hugendorn, Ryan Winfeld. I don't think Ryan Winfeld even gritted. Um, but there commences our Euro Global Division Week 5 race here at Hockenheim. And um, what can I say? Absolutely wonderful drive. I hope all of you had as much fun as I did watching this race. And uh, you know what? I'll see you guys all next week. And have a good night. See you later, boys.